Good morning, dears. Let's finish the question and answers from the chapter Tropic Cascade written by Kamal T. Dunn. Open your textbook at page number 23. You can see the 12 comprehension questions. Well, the first question is Define Tropic Cascade. The answer is Tropic cascades are powerful indirect interactions that can control entire ecosystems. Here the removal or replacement of a top predator can shift the circumstances of lives all around it. The second question is, what were introduced at the Yellowstone National Park? Answer. Grey bulls were reintroduced at the Yellowstone National Park, America. The grey bulls culled the overabundant deer population rather than a positive result got spread out to the other species. Moving on to the third question. List the changes brought about by the growth of trees. Answer. Uh, when the deer population was culled, the first change was marked through the growth of the trees. The growth of the trees brought back the songbirds who started to nest on the trees. These birds scattered seeds which led to the growth of the underbush and in that underbush lives the snowshoe hare. Now moving on to the fourth question. Uh, what were the animals and birds that uh, returned? Answer. When the deer population was culled using the grey bulls, the lost glory of the forest started to invigorate. The birds and animals that uh, returned to the forest include snowshoe hare, weasel, wolf, hawk, falcon, eagle, kestrel, bear, beavers, muskrats, tadpoles, American Dipper, Vulture, Coyote, etc. Now the fifth question. How did the river change? Answer. The river changes along with the change that was brought out as a result of the reintroduction of the grey wolves. From the scattered the birds and animals, seeds got distributed along the riverside and this helped in the sprouting of berries, bush and trees. The path of the river itself got altered as a result of this and it started to curl and maintain through the forest. Now the sixth question. What brought the beer and the beaver? Answer. The berries near the riverside and the abundance of fish in the river attracted the beer to the forest. Undergrowth and the willow trees now growing right down to the river brought the beavers who allowed it to dam in the river in order to earn the food. Moving on to the seventh question. Uh, what does the poet refer to in the line? The night song of the fathers of tadpoles. Answer. The line. The night song of the fathers of the tadpoles refers to the night cry of the frogs which has now come back as an, as an addendum to the beauty of the forest. It is an excellent reminder of unity in communication and the rippling change one can bring about if he lets his voice be heard. The broken down communications in the forest have restored to its previous rhythm. Now question number eight, that is, name the omnivores that came to feed on the dead. Answer, an omnivore is an animal that has the ability to eat and survive on both plant and animal matter. The omnivores that came to feed on the dead include vultures and coyotes. Now the Ninth question, that is, uh, what was the event in the poet's life that brought the cascade effect? Answer, 
The event in the life of the poet that brings the cascade effect is the fact that she is the mother of a child now. Using the analogy of the wolves and the deer, the poet says that with the coming of a new member into her world, her entire world changes. Now moving on to the tenth question. How does the poet reintroduce herself? Answer: The poet reintroduces herself by thrilling in the feeling that now she is a mother. Using the idea of ecofeminism, she compares her jovial state with the tropic cascade effect that was brought into the Yellowstone National Park. Now the eleventh question. Explain the line. Nothing was ever the same. Answer: The line "nothing was ever the same" indicates that the passing away of a bird, bad time, and the bringing in of a new dawn. Now that she is a mother, she feels that the barren condition of her life has gone forever, and the joy of green has come for her at last. Now moving on to the last question, the twelfth question. Uh, what is the central theme of the poem, Tropic Cascade? Answer: uh, Using the analogy of a mother and a forest, the poem Tropic Cascade talks about the reinvigoration of life back from a barren state. The poet here uses the technique of ecofeminism, which states the parallel relationship between a woman and a nature. Now let's move on to the essay questions. As I usually do, I have included six paragraph questions within the essay itself, and at the last question, there is the seventh question, I will be discussing separately. So first, let's discuss the essay questions. Uh, first one: Write in detail about the changes I should end by the removal of a predator, with reference to the poem. Second question: In a poem, *Tropic Cascade*, the poet seeks to make the reader understand the idea that all things are connected, and that a slight change in one can affect the others in the web of life. In this case, the third question: The poem *Tropic Cascade* presents the resilience of nature and the ability of the landscape to reinvent itself after a change. Discuss the significance of this idea with regard to man's relationship with nature. Now note the idea. The second paragraph of this is the answers of paragraph question numbers one, two, three, and five from the textbook. The third paragraph of this is the answer of paragraph question number four from the textbook. The fourth paragraph of the essay is the answer of paragraph question number six from the textbook. Let's move on to the introduction paragraph. When patterns are broken, new worlds emerge. The famous American poet Tully Kupferberg once said, "The concept of change is relative to time." Change is seen in the natural world's transformations as well as its their transition from season to season. Change occurs among people who transform both physically, mentally, socially, and emotionally. In the poem *Tropic Cascade*, Kamal De Dung talks about the positive changes that are brought into the our dry world with the introduction of a new member. Using the analogy of a mother and a forest, the poem *Tropic Cascade* talks about the reinvigoration of life back from a barren state. The poet here uses the techniques of ecofeminism, which states the parallel relationship between a woman and nature. Now we will move on to the second paragraph of the essay. So as I said, the second paragraph of the essay is the answer. Paragraph question number one, two, three, and five. 
സോ ഇതെല്ലാം ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഒരേ ടൈപ്പ് ആണ് സോ നമുക്ക് ഒരു ആൻസർ മതിയാകും ഇതിനെല്ലാം സോ പാരഗ്രാഫ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ നമ്പർ വൺ ഏസ് വാട്ട് ഇഫക്ട് ഡിഡ് ദ റീ ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ഗ്രേ വുൾസ് ഹാവ് ഓൺ ദ ലാൻഡ്സ്കേപ്പ് the second paragraph question is uh, write a note on the relationship between the flora and fauna of the national park how did one influence the other third paragraph question is explain the line all this life born from one hungry animal the fifth paragraph question is explain how the poet visually presents the la- uh, cascade effect in the poem now the answer is the world famous english writer mr william shakespeare sings in one of his most famous plays charles and cressida one touch of nature makes the whole world kin there is in all visible things an invisible fecundity a dimmed light a meek namelessness a hidden wholeness This is a mysterious unity and integrity. In the poem Tropic Cascade, we see such a mysterious connection working silently but visibly in a forest to bring back the lost glory, its life itself. The central theme of the poem as given in the title itself, Tropic Cascade. Tropic cascades are powerful indirect interactions that can control entire ecosystems. Here the removal or replacement of a top predator can shift the circumstances of lives all around it. The poet is Kimmelby Dunn visually presents an account of how the relationship between the flora and fauna of a national park changes the reintroduction of one group of animals. The poet is uses America's first national park, the Yellowstone National Park, as a background for her poem. Before the coming of the wolves in this park the situation of the park was pathetic the over abundant deer population had destroyed the entire ecosystem and every corner of the forest had to suffer from its bad effect but then the authorities of the park decided to reintroduce the gray wolves in order to cull the deer population and thus to settle the forest to its earlier glory the gray wolf scald the up over abundant deer population and then a positive result got spread out to the other species when the deer population was scald the first change was marked through the growth of the trees the growth of the trees brought back the song birds who started to nest on the trees these birds scattered seeds which led to the growth of the underbrush and in that underbrush leaves the snow shoe hair all the animals who once loved the forest because of the lack of a substance now started to come back the birds and animals that have returned to the forest include snow shoe hair weasel wolf hawk falcon eagle kestrel bear beavers muskrat tarpoles american dipper vulture coyote etc the poet is says all this life born from one hungry animal nearly absent for decades willows have brought back brought back to life in a yellow stone and the reason is that many years after the wolves were reintroduced to yellow stone in 1995 14 wolves from canada were brought into the park by truck the wolves changed the park's ecology in many ways they have caused a tropic cascade wolves are at the top of it all the they changed the condition for everyone else including willow trees it is a rare change to understand in detail how the effects of an apex predator ripple through an ecosystem much of what has taken place is recounted in the recently released book titled Decade of the Wolf Returning the Wild to Yellowstone by Mr. Smith and a Gray Ferguson. 
Now we will move on to the third paragraph of the essay. As I said, the third paragraph of the essay is the answer of paragraph question number four from the textbook. That question is, comment on the reasons for and the consequences of the change in the course of the river. Answer. Rivers play many important roles in shaping and maintaining the world's terrestrial land mass and its biodiversity. The species that live in and around rivers are interdependent and rely on the specific conditions. In the poem Tropic Cascade, we are introduced to the magic brought in by the changes happened when the course of a river changes. All these start with the reintroduction of the Grey Bulls to the Yellowstone National Park, America. In the poem, the river changes along with the change that was brought out as a result of the reintroduction of the Grey Bulls. From the scatter of the birds and animals, seeds got distributed along the riverside and this helped in the sprouting of berries, bush and trees. The path of the river itself got altered as a result of this and it started to curl and meander through the forest. The river was running straight until then. However, the new growth forced the river to change the course of its flow. This created a whole new landscape and it prevented the flooding of the river. This allowed the vegetation to thrive. The berries near the riverside and the abundance of fish in the river attracted the beer to the forest. Undergrowth and the willow trees, now growing right down to the river, brought the beavers allowed to dam in the river in order to earn the food. Soil erosion had a cause to much more variation in the path of the river. But with the berries on the bank and more vegetation growing next to the river, the river bank stabilizes. Now, the wolves have altogether changed the Yellowstone's physical geography. As the beavers spread and build new dams and ponds, the cascade effect continued. Beaver dams have multiple effects on stream hydrology. They even out the seasonal pulses of runoffs, store water for recharging the water table, and provide cold, shady water for fish while the now robust willow stands provides habitat for songbirds. The story of the wolf-free interaction demonstrates how crucial every member of an ecosystem is important to a landscape. From the headwaters in the mountains to the confluence with the ocean, the river flows generate and support a great variety of aquatic habitats and biodiversity. So, it is not an overstatement to describe rivers as the most important environmental influence on the surface of the planet. Rivers are naturally prone to change course, but here, when the course of the river changes, we see how the course of life gets shifted to a new path, which has hopes for all better. Now we will move on to the fourth paragraph of the essay. As I said, the fourth paragraph of the essay is answer of paragraph question number six from the textbook. That question is, uh, how does the coming of the baby changes the life of the poet? Answer, becoming a mother changes everything. Children change one's life, especially that of a mother's. They make them a little more hectic and busy and complicated, but a beautiful thing that brings in so much life. More importantly, a child makes a mother's life better in more ways than we can count. Using the analogy of a mother and a forest, the poem Tropic Cascade talks about the reinvigoration of life back from a barren state. The poet is here uses the techniques of ecofeminism, which states the parallel relationship between a woman and nature. The poet starts the poem by discussing the changes brought into the Yellowstone National Park with the reintroduction of the Grey Wolves. From a general note, we see towards the end that how the poem 
spreads out to embrace the personal of the poetess. Here the poetess connects the tropic cascade to the human cascade. It is a human cascade since it, since it is a reinvention. The birth of a child has brought in a cascade effect for her. She was reintroduced to the concept of motherhood. It was a new identity and hence a new life, a change from the usual course. Everything around her now takes on new colors. She now finds herself in a new bond with life to the child. It is a bond that gives her all positive vigor that she lacked once she was fated to live as a barren woman. Now the barrenness has given way to a new shower which has brought new flowers to her world. She thrills in the thought that, like the forest which has passed through a magical change, she too experiences the same. The poet is here sings. I reintroduce myself to myself, this time a mother, after which nothing was ever the same. Nothing should ever be the same in her home, since those things that had a bad effects on her. Now that she is before the dawn of a new reign, she no longer bothers of her days spread as a childless mother. She has found out her heart of heart, a world of her own that the birth of a new child has given her. When she says that the course of the river has changed with this, we understand how positive that change is. Life has restored back to its right place and she takes in a new breath to walk forth with a small hand holding on her hand. Everything in her life has got re realigned. Every emotion is felt more deeply, more acutely and beautifully too. The child will forever carry a piece of her heart with it. And he was the first, the impetus, the one to start life afresh over again. Yuru paragraph question. I mean, Yuru paragraph in the law. So, as we the third question in the paragraph, I took Pariya. Explain the lines. All this life born from one hungry animal. So, that's what we already have. Second paragraph, I will say it in the But that is proper right to wear another paragraph. The blend is the same. So, now we will discuss the concluding paragraph of the essay. Continuity gives us roots, change gives us branches, letting us stretch and uh, grow and reach new heights. The poem Tropic Cascade exemplifies hope. The poem explores the story of reinvention and finding oneself after motherhood. The poet here seeks to make the reader understand the idea that all things are connected and that a slight change in one can affect the others in the web of life. The poem presents the resilience of nature and the ability of the landscape to reinvent itself after a change. Now we will move on to the remaining paragraph, paragraph question number seven, that is, comment on the significance of the title Tropic Cascade. The answer is, a good title is intriguing. Often the title of a work is the first step to the story. The title is part of the overall impression for the literary work. The title sets a tone and creates an expectation. The title of Kamal T. Dung's uh, Tropic Cascade exemplifies all these. The central theme of the poem is given in the title itself, Tropic Cascade. Tropic cascades are powerful indirect interactions that can control the entire ecosystem. Here the removal or replacement of a top predator can shift the circumstances of life all around it. The point is, Camel D. Dunn visually presents an account of how the relationship between the flora and fauna of a national park changes with the reintroduction of one group of animals. 
The point is uses America's first national park, the Yellowstone National Park, as a background for her poem. Before the coming of the wolves in this park, the situation of the park was pathetic. The overabundant deer population had destroyed the entire ecosystem and every corner of the forest had to suffer from its bad effect. But then, the authorities of the park decided to reintroduce the grey wolves in order to cull the deer population and thus to settle the forest to its earlier glory. The grey wolves culled the overabundant deer population and then a positive result got spread out to the other species. When the deer population was culled, the first change was marked through the growth of the trees. The growth of the trees brought back the songbirds who started to nest on the trees. These birds scattered seeds which led to the growth of the underbush and in that underbush lives the snowshoe hare. All the animals who once left the forest because of the lack of substance now started to come back. The birds and animals that return to the forest include snowshoe hare, weasel, vole, hawk, falcon, eagle, kestrel, weir, beavers, muskrats, tadpoles, American dipper, vulture, coyote, etc. The poet sings, All this life born from one hungry animal. Nearly absent for decades, willows have roared back to life in Yellowstone and the reason is that many years after, the wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone. In 1995, 14 bulls from Canada were brought into the park by truck. The bulls changed the park's ecology in many ways. They have caused a tropic cascade. Bulls are at the top of its altar. They change the sorry. They change the condition for everyone else, including willow trees. It is a rare change to understand in detail how the effects of an apex predator ripple through an ecosystem. Much of what has taken place is recounted in the recently released book titled The Decade of the Wolf, Returning the Wild to Yellowstone, written by Mr. Smith and Gray Ferguson. Now we have finished discussing all the question and answers from the chapter Tropic Escape by Camille T. Dunn. In the next class, we will discuss the chapter The Rightful Inheritors of the Earth.